Uh, appreciate being in Yankton today. I was looking back. I've, I think I've done this like 13 times, I think over 13 years. So um, it is always fun to come and talk about the Great Plains Athletic Conference. I guess I'll start with my notes and then I'll work backwards. Um, I asked Jeremy, I said, what should I talk about? He said, women's basketball. <laughs> because everybody's very intrigued about women's basketball with the success of the Lancers this year, which has been great. And the run that Coach Schlimgen and the ladies have put together here over the last uh, month and a half is nothing short of amazing. I said, if they did that in March, they'd be a national champion, right? Because of the teams that they're beating right now uh, are so highly ranked. So. Um, I've got bored Saturday night, or Sunday night, but then I had to do it over yesterday with new ratings. So I do have it charted out who the 32 teams would be as of today uh, if we had the national tournament. And uh, according to my count, well, I'll give you background first. Ten conferences compete in NAI Division II. Of those ten, eight get multiple bids, two get a single bid, one gets three, that's the Association of Independent Institutions. That's kind of a catch-all uh, teams that don't have a conference. So you add that all up, you have 22 automatic berths. 22. It's a 32-team tournament, so the math says how many spots are left? 10. So there's 10 at-larges, and there will be 10 at-larges this year. It's actually listed as 9 to 10. We reserve the right to get a local team in if they do not qualify by another way, but we have not used that method in a long, long time. Morningside locked that up uh, with the GPAC championship a week ago uh, when they clinched that. So they will be GPAC birth number one. So long story short, if the national tournament was today, the 10th at large, that would be the final team in, would be the 25th team in the country, Dickinson State out of North Dakota. Okay. Now there are teams below that that are in as conference representation. Where does Mount Marty fall? As the number 19 team, by my count, they would be at large seven if it was today, seven out of 10. Now that is if everything goes according to what the conference standings are right now. That cut line starts to go up, up, up as upsets start to occur because if a team down at the bottom wins, they get an AQ, a team above them by rating takes an at-large. So you start to work your way through. That all happened this summer. So we were on a great roll. We were gonna add College of St. Mary uh, over the summer. We were working on that. And uh, that went really well. We, we got them into the system. We uh, got the schedules redone and all that. And then July 15 came, or 20 or whatever it was. And out of the blue, Nebraska Wesleyan announced that they were leaving the conference. And that was, that was, a, tough, that was a tough week. Uh, charter member, um, all those things, going to the Iowa conference. Um, you know, a lot of how did this happen? How could it happen? Where did it come from? Those types of things. But once we sorted it all out, it is what it is. And, this will be their last year in the GPAC. And uh, we, move, we move on without them. Uh, they've been a very good member. They've always been a dual member of NAI and NCAA, so it has had some confusing moments to it, what sports they play and, and the like. But uh, you know, we still are a great, strong nucleus of schools. Um, we'll be at 11 women's schools and 10 men's schools next year, and that's still, by NAI rights, a very, very strong conference. So we're excited about our future. Um, scheduling is hard. Uh, Chuck will attest to this. Um, you know, why do you, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to say, are you going to expand? I mean, that, that question's coming, and we did just expand with CSM. We put a lot of thought into that and didn't make that decision overnight. We've looked at ideas uh, with the ADs, the FARs, the presidents. We've done a strategic uh, outlook. We have some ideas out there, but, but there's just nothing in the works right now um, for, for the conference. Uh, Geography plays a big part in that, but, but scheduling is so hard in intercollegiate athletics right now. Outside of your conference, finding non-conference games in almost any sport is, is virtually impossible. Um, I still have schools that have emailed me for basketball next year that they have four open dates for next year yet. And, and you know, that's tough. That's tough to fill. Um, times, are, times are hard economically for, for traveling. You can't go five, six states away to pick up games like you maybe used to. Uh, and there's not as many teams around. And with the uh, change in the summit with Division IIs now being Division Ones, you know, those USD, SDSU games maybe aren't as readily available as fill-in last games. You, know, we, you see like Dakota Wesleyan came and played USD women. That was an exhibition game. You know, so you do see some of those. So those are the challenges that face the GPAC and NAI right now uh, are on the scheduling front and just in numbers. But, that being said, we're still very committed to each other and what we do in the GPAC. 